for the love of everything that is Rachel Bloom. If you have not finished Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, please turn the volume almost all the way down. Hit the like button. Flip your device over and leave it alone for like 10 minutes so you don't ruin my watch time. But do not watch this video yet. Please, please, please. There's a spoiler tag in the thumbnail for a reason. So unless you recognize the scene where the thumbnail is coming from, do not watch further. Even if you think you know what's going to happen, I don't want to ruin the experience for you in any way, shape, or form. With that said, video time! Was some part of you disappointed that Daryl didn't end up with White Josh, or even that Daryl went through the season's-long love story of his first male-male relationship, ultimately just to end up back in a male-female relationship? Well, let's talk about it and figure out why that's actually great. Daryl Whitefeather is a beautiful puppy of a man, an avid lover of bean dip, I did rescue the classic beach must-have, bean dip! And, after a little personal growth, a very unselfish friend. You're my best friend, and I know I'm not yours, and that's okay. He is someone I wish existed in real life, and who I would be honored to call my friend. At the beginning of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, he is a newly divorced man out of a very unhealthy relationship. His now ex-wife never truly loved him for the person he was. He doesn't talk about his feelings all the time. He doesn't cry at cat food commercials. And thankfully, the marriage was ended. Divorce is still awful. Oh, why do you think that? Because it means a happy marriage is over. No, it means a bad marriage is over. As opposed to just going on and on forever. Atrophying from the inside out, becoming more and more toxic, eating away at each of them until they don't even recognize the person they see when they look in the mirror. Anyway, Daryl meets White Josh, which leads to this whole realization that there's another side to himself that he never even knew was there. Later, bro. Which is a perfect segue into our first topic. I'm getting by, and it's something I'd like you to mystify. And the thought and care that went into crafting such an amazing number for our dear Daryl Whitefeather. By special invitation, kidding, and purely for the benefit of this video essay, don't fact check that, let's listen to Rachel Bloom's discussion of the development of that song. It's like we said in the song Getting By, which was written by Adam and mm. written after talking to um, a rep at GLAAD. Okay, what do people say to guys, to anyone when they come out as bi, but especially to guys? And it's like, you're just gay. Like, no. bi is right. just a, 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 you know, a pit stop on the way to gay town or whatever. This is actually one of the issues I've heard expressed by Phil Molina, the founder of New Rockstars. Side note, if you love nerdy out about popular movies, it's definitely a channel I'd recommend you give a gay under. Being a bisexual man means gay men are hoping you're mostly gay and straight women assuming you're mostly gay. This is something I, as a straight man, didn't know about the bi male experience. And it was a welcome education. Because honestly, we can't even start to understand someone else's experiences unless those experiences are expressed it's part of the reason i love phil molina and the creators of getting by for just putting that information out there next let's explore the song at this point in daryl's journey he and white josh have given their romantic relationship a real shot i didn't want you to feel pressured into something serious i want something serious d i want that with you been together for a while. Let's go join Madison in the mocktail line. <laughs> Fell in love not only as boyfriend and boyfriend, but as friends. Oh, I love you, Josh. I love you too. But ultimately had to split up because while their relationship was a hell of a lot healthier than Daryl's marriage, they ultimately wanted different things for their futures. You don't want to have a baby, do you? No. I don't think so. He also had a little help from the most clever little nine-year-old. Oh, wait, so this is... Yeah, I guess it is. God, this sucks. Did a nine-year-old just trick us into doing something we weren't brave enough to do ourselves? <laughs> I think so. 
Which, by the way, I'm only saying because my daughter is now 10. <laughs> After some time apart, during which they both got to grieve their ended relationship, and Daryl got to meet his new daughter, White Josh and Daryl come back together as friends. Asked me to come. She did? Yeah. Why? She said you wanted to see me. I did want to see you. I wanted to see my friend. We're friends? I thought you didn't want to be. I thought you didn't want to be. <laughs> I missed you. Me too. I mean, I didn't miss myself. I missed you. Yeah, right. Right, right, right. <laughs> Got it. So with them reuniting as friends, we get another opportunity to see into their experience and see how sometimes allies can be wrong in how they express their allyship. So with that said, there's no better place to start than an experience that Clark Moore, who plays AJ and is a member of the LGBTQ plus community in real life, had on the show. One of the first uh, musical numbers that we did was Group Mind. And I remember talking to Aline sort of like on the side while we were shooting it. And I was sort of like, yeah, what's the, what's the thought process behind this song, just out of curiosity? And she was like, well, you know, because we have these two characters who like Daryl and White Josh, who like don't really make sense dating each other. But because they are, the, fan, the fans are like, yes, of course, they have to be together. They <laughs> must get married. It makes sense. You're kind of the only two LGBTQ people I know, so to me it's clearly fate, 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 fate. And as a fan of the show, before I was on the show, I was like, oh yeah, you're right. I am rooting for this couple, even though it makes like maybe no sense for them to be together. I was like, yeah, of course they should be together. <laughs> um, and so I loved like the awareness of that and how like so much of that comes from the fact that we have so few rep op opportunities for representation on television that whatever we get we're like we're so you know <laughs> it's precious it's really important because while it's absolutely adorable the style in which it's being communicated it's pretty concerning when you look at what's actually being communicated especially since they don't only just communicate their shipping of daryl and white josh but actively disregard the basic rules of consent there's sprinkles throughout, but the easiest clip I could use to drive the point home is when the whole group starts chanting And on the off chance you're like, eh, that's not too bad. Try taking Daryl and White Josh and gender flipping them and then see how that makes you feel. So now with those two lessons clearly laid out, why is Daryl ending up with a woman the final lesson Crazy Ex-Girlfriend wants to teach us about the bi-male experience? After all, from a certain point of view, it can seem pretty heteronormative to have Daryl go through all these life-expanding experiences with Josh just to end up back in essentially the same relationship he had right before the show started. But that's the thing. He's not in the same relationship. He's actually in a healthier relationship than both white Josh and his ex-wife for a few reasons. Firstly, obviously the easiest one to say is that they actually fit. We get a hint of that in their first interaction. Are you one of those um, time and a place for bean dip people? I guess I am. And it's every time and every place. Oh, wow! I mean... Look at that! I know! That's crazy! Hi, I'm April. Hi, Daryl. Hi. But it's confirmed to us verbally when Daryl and April are discussing how they can't keep seeing each other because their daughters just don't get along. Yeah, we can't hang out this is a bummer i just thought you know for a minute you and i it's so hard to meet someone and this feels easy but the kids are the most important thing absolutely i'll always remember your bean dip See, it's so easy, partly because April never questions who Daryl is. She accepts him immediately, which automatically makes her a better fit than his ex-wife. Uh, quick side tangent, though. I vehemently disagree for their reasoning of stop dating. Uh, for me, yes, as a parent, you need to make your child a priority. But I get 
concerned with decisions of like this, where you are showing your children that someone who loves them should be sacrificing their own happiness just to, I don't know, accommodate your bad behavior, which is just not a message I agree with. Like, there was an opportunity to teach the kids that life is not about other people sacrificing their happiness for your benefit all the time. Um, but, you know, just because I disagree with them, that's not really relevant to them. The important thing is they agree on their parenting methods. They are a better fit. Plus, easy clap, but April's down to be a parent because she's already pushed one out, um, which makes her a better fit for Daryl than White Josh was. And one more note before we continue on. Uh, thank God those kids are smart enough to learn that lesson on their own. Uh, they have bright freaking futures ahead of them. Have a fun quarantine. Yeah, enjoy spending lots and lots of time together. This way, folks. But frankly, all these points could have been achieved with a male love interest. So finally, let me echo the intentions of the previous two songs and explain. With April being a woman, we get some great representation of the bi-male experience. And to explain why it's great, let me give another example from Philip Molina. You know what I'm not looking forward to about dating? Discovering how many female allies can't see themselves dating a bi guy. So with this in mind, while it's not expressly stated as being an issue on the show, this is the experience of some bi men. Maybe all bi men. I definitely don't know. But the benefit of seeing a woman date a bi man on popular media without ever having an issue with it, hell, not even asking what could it be like dating a bi guy? That sends a clear message to audiences, probably specifically straight women, that sexuality should never be a deal breaker. If you both want to date, then just date. Bi men are not. Bi men shouldn't go. And if a bi man wants to end up with a woman who wants to end up with him, hell yeah. So that is why I think Daryl ending up with a woman is fucking great. I had the first knee-jerk response thinking like, man, it would have been great if Daryl ended up with a guy because it would have been further away from the hetero norm and that would have felt more progressive, but I was wrong. And by listening to others and processing that, I got to learn and grow. So at the end of the day, I couldn't be happier for Daryl and April. Although I am very jealous because they're very happy and I am so alone. Did you hit the like button? <laughs> and I'm going to do the outro while putting on my new rock stars uh, wrist thingies that I got. One of the times I met Philip Molina, uh, it was right after Infinity War. It says spared by Thanos. Um, but basically... I'm still learning how to do video essays. Uh, this took me about four drafts and not just drafts, but like shooting and editing it to get to a point where I felt like I communicated myself well. So this would be the time where I'd tell you if you want to like join my discord, uh, you can join my Patreon and we can talk about movies and stuff with my podcast co host or Crazy Ex-Girlfriend especially. Yeah, fuck the movies. I mean, this is movies are dope, so that's a little awkward of me to say. But uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time. Uh, seriously, please hit the like button. And I'm down to geek out about Crazy Ex-Girlfriend with you all in the comments. You don't need to come to the Discord if you don't want to. It's a lot of great stuff. Hit the like button. I, I don't know how many times I'm supposed to say that. I, I follow Graham Stefan. He says it a lot. Bye. Till next time.